So the other day, I talked about the marketing in Tears of the Kingdom and Nintendo's strangeness with it. And people, you know, as always, like anything I do, there's always agreements and disagreements over my viewpoints on how Nintendo is choosing to market Tears of the Kingdom here in 2023. Uh, you know, I don't feel like the marketing campaign has really been fantastic and out of this world. That doesn't mean I want the game any less, but... Uh, one aspect that people have been talking about is when is the blowout going to begin? And obviously, I don't think that's happened yet. Some people disagree, and that's fine. What I actually don't want to talk about, though, is PAX. And really, any possibility of a public demo event for Tears of the Kingdom. Now, we've had public demo events for many Zelda games. Most recently, Breath of the Wild, of course, and Link's Awakening. I guess Link's Awakening being more recent than Breath of the Wild because there was a remake. But besides that, we've had public demo events for many of the Zelda games over the years. Most of these demo events being at things like PAX or E3 or even things like they've done Best Buy demo events and stuff. But it does appear that for Tears of the Kingdom, we're simply not going to get a chance to go hands-on with it before release. Now, that doesn't mean nobody will. There probably will be a media-only, invite-only special thing that happens at Nintendo headquarters in Redmond, Washington at some point in April. Although it's weird because you figure by the beginning of the next month, they would probably have the game for review purposes. Still, there probably will be some sort of preview event that's exclusive for like the Kotakus and IGNs and game uh, spots of the world and stuff like that. Unfortunately, I doubt I'm getting an invite, but... There won't be any public demo, and some people are confused because I keep seeing this brought up. Oh, Nate, Tears of the Kingdom, it's going to be at PAX. Uh, I'm tired of correcting this in live streams, so let's correct this right now. Now, before we dive deeper into this, I want to remind you, we're on our road to 100,000 subscribers, and if we can get there by the time Tears of the Kingdom comes out, we will be giving away a collector's edition of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. So the art book, the pin set, the poster, oh boy, it's really cool. Don't forget about the steelbook. That's actually something I'm really excited about. I love steelbooks. Anyways, guys, if we get to 100,000 subscribers, it could be yours. All right, so look, I'm going to PAX East, right? I booked my trip to PAX East, uh, I would say about a couple of weeks ago at this point, and we're going, right? We have our media passes, we we have our, our hotel, the, the, the car rental, because we're going to rent a car to get around, because it's a little bit cheaper than just taking Ubers everywhere, and yeah, we got our flights and all that, right? We're going to PAX East. Now, originally, why we planned to go to PAX East, and when I say we, I mean me and Eric from the Nintendo Prime Podcast, we originally planned to go to PAX East because of the possibility there might be a Tears of the Kingdom demo at PAX East. Now, the reason we thought this was because the floor plans for PAX East showed a massive Nintendo booth. Actually, the second largest booth in the entire show. Some people said it was the largest, but it actually was the second largest booth on the entire floor. It just said Nintendo. So it's like, man, they're going to have this really big booth. It's bigger than the Animal Crossing one they did back in 2019. Clearly, they're going to be advertising Tears of the Kingdom. And you know what? On the off chance they decide not to do that, it's probably going to be Pikmin 4, right? Like They're, they're going to go with one of those games if they're going to be in person at PAX. And Nintendo was in person at PAX West last year. So hey, you know what, maybe we're about to use this as their pseudo E3 demo for a Zelda game or for Pikmin, because Nintendo typically has demos at these events. Well, as we get here, we're a couple weeks out from PAX, it happens on the 24th, or 23rd to the 26th, I guess, in specific, I actually fly out in eight days, a little over a week. Here's the thing, I have discovered now, because the floor plans are updated, that Nintendo is no longer at PAX East, at least not at PAX East in the way we thought. They do not have a massive booth. The booth we thought was Nintendo has now been renamed to Nintendo vs. Arcade. You can go ahead and look that up if you're interested. Obviously, it deals with a lot of arcade stuff that, yeah, obviously Nintendo is part of that, but it's nothing related to an actual normal standard Nintendo booth. Now, Nintendo is listed technically as a participant in the PAX arena, but that's really about 
multiplayer esports. It's an esports arena. So your Smash Bros of the world, your Splatoon, heck, maybe they sneak Mario Kart in for some reason. I don't know, but that's what that's about. It's an esports arena. People can go and participate in esports and watch professional esports teams go at it. So I look, Nintendo's basically not at PAX East. If we're going to be frank, people would look at this now and go, Nintendo's not there. If this was the map we had a month ago, we probably wouldn't have even booked this trip to PAX. But we did. We're going. Things are already paid for. Can't get refunded. We'll find some unique content to make. There will be game demos there of other games from other companies, including Square Enix, that we will gladly get our hands on. And on the off chance Nintendo has a behind-scenes media-only demo, which wouldn't be on the public floor, we'll let you know because... We're going to be there, and yes, we have media passes for the first time in Nintendo Prime history, so if there is a behind-the-scenes thing, we will figure it out and participate, but at this point, I'm kind of doubting it. Now, it's it's interesting because this has been the primary way that I would say all prior Zelda games were advertised. I, I think this might be the thing that, as a Zelda fan, I feel is missing, the hands-on demo event that we typically got at E3, but we also got at some of these other events. We don't have that. We had it for Breath of the Wild, even though it didn't come out till early 2017, because it did it at E3 2016. And I know we're never going to truly get an E3 replacement. If Nintendo's not at E3, you can't expect demos. But it just, to me, feels like a missed opportunity to sell this game to new consumers. That's really all I'm worried about with Tears of the Kingdom when it comes to this marketing. I don't think for people like me, it matters. There are people that are still kind of wishy-washy that did play Breath of the Wild that think it might just be DLC. I don't know if that argument's ever going to go away. Honestly, one of the worst things Nintendo probably ever said about Tears of the Kingdom was that it started out as DLC because that was it's going to be really hard to break that stigma. It won't matter if the game is two or three times larger than Breath of the Wild. It won't matter how much content that's in it. People will always just treat it as glorified DLC. It doesn't look good enough. It takes place in the same Hyrule. And that's probably why people feel like it's just glorified DLC, because it takes place in the same Hyrule. Now, I, I, I can't make a judgment like that, obviously, until I play it. Maybe they didn't do enough. Maybe it is really same feeling, or maybe it's not. I, I can't know at this point. But a demo could have gone a long way to quelching not only the fear of it, the DLC stuff, and helping those consumers realize, oh, wait, no, this is a worthy $70 product because they are charging more for it than Breath of the Wild. Also, they could have done, in my opinion, a better job selling it to new consumers. Now, there are arguments to be made that they are doing a good job. They're chopping up the current trailers, putting them into commercials, uh, and they are advertising the game. I think when I said it didn't feel like their marketing campaign began, some people got confused to, to me Nintendo's not marketing at all. No, they are. There's commercials on YouTube. I haven't seen one on TV yet, but maybe it's just not on the channels I watch. Uh, but look, they're marketing the game. They're, every other week, they're releasing like a post on Twitter that is pretty much just rehashing screenshots they actually already shared with us. But people kind of view that as, oh, that's how you get to the casual market, or that's how you get to new consumers. I don't think any of these commercials or screenshots are really doing it for new consumers. Um, let me let me explain. Nintendo has a 15-second commercial they've been running on YouTube, right? They've, they've been running it to probably millions and millions and millions of views. In the commercial, it shows Ganon uh, doing the voice acting, about kill them all. It shows a blood moon happening and enemies popping up. And then Zelda saying, I don't think you could stop them this time. And that's it. That's basically their ad. That ad, if you played Breath of the Wild, if, if they're trying to attract Breath of the Wild players, just looks like Breath of the Wild. If you're trying to attract new players, what are you talking about? Who are they killing? What is going on? Why should I care? New gamers typically need to be sold on the entire experience, not just a 15-second clip that doesn't explain anything. That, to me, is the problem. Breath of the Wild hit on so many new consumers because of the massive marketing campaign behind it. Yeah, obviously, you got to be a great game first and foremost, but the marketing was huge. It was impossible to go anywhere online without seeing the game. And on top of that, you would see a lot of it. The questions you might have would be answered. But they're not answered this time. They're not answered for hardcore fans. They're not answered for 
uh, you know, skeptical fans, and they're not going to be answered for the general audience either. In my opinion, the best way to advertise to new consumers is to give as much information as possible. And I know a lot of you think that's not the way, but I'm telling you right now, new consumers need as much information as possible, not as little as possible. A 15 second clip is not enough. It's not enough. And I know they have time. Today marks two months until Tears of the Kingdom comes out. They have time. They probably won't be doing it this month because they're going to focus on the Mario movie. In fact, we've already seen them focus on the Mario movie. And they could do it in April. I get it. But generally, to get new consumers, you have to market outside of one month out. One month out is hype building time. You're building the hype for the people that are already planning to buy it. Usually, one month out is not how you get a new audience. New audiences require several months of marketing. So they've already missed the window to do that, in my opinion. Now, I've taken marketing classes and uh, you know various media courses over the years, and it's true that you can still have effective marketing one month out. It's just when you're trying to capture a new audience, typically you want a longer tail of time to sell things to them. And Nintendo chose not to go that route. I think they're primarily just trying to sell this game to people who bought Breath of the Wild. I think that's a mistake. I think that's a missed opportunity to continue to expand the fan base. I'll give you an example. Witcher 2 sold itself to new and old, and because of that, outsold Witcher 1. That's good. That's what you should want to do. But Nintendo isn't, for better or for worse, at least isn't doing it well. I could be wrong, and the game could go on to sell 40, 50 million. I have no idea. But I, I think it's a tall task for it to even sell half as much as Breath of the Wild. Call me crazy for saying that. Call me crazy. But even if it sells half as much, that's still a hell of a lot of Zelda, right? Oh, no, it's only the second best-selling Zelda game of all time. Except I think they probably put a bigger budget into this. It feels like they might have had a bigger budget for this than the original Breath of the Wild. But we're not going to know about that until they get to the interview process and someone asks them about it. And Nintendo's like, oh, yeah, we put more money into this than any prior game. Anyways, uh, that's that's what I have for you today. I hope you guys enjoyed the conversation and you have a good rest of your weekend.